Hey everyone, it's Andy from Electric Petrolhead. I've been driving this Renault Zoe ZE50 for the last week. I've done 400 miles, I've done Milton Keynes to Leeds and back in a day. I feel like I've really got to know the car and it frankly is brilliant. However, I think you can learn a lot about how good a car is from learning about the points that someone doesn't like. And it's gonna be a little bit nitpicking because this really is a rather good car. But here's five things I hate about the new Zoe ZE50. I'm about six, six foot, six foot one, and I just find the way that this corner of the door ends in quite a sharp corner. I've caught my arm on it, and it's been close to catching my sort of face on it. So, someone who's a bit sh shorter, maybe sort of five, seven, five, ten, that's that's going to be at eye level. And I just don't understand why they've had to make it because when you first get in the car, it's, it gets close, and. You know, it's not like um, where it goes over, there's still a lip there, so it's not like they've sort of made it into a perfectly um, level roof. So I'm not quite sure why that had to be so sharp. Although, you know, it does make for a slightly better look on the car when the doors are closed. But So maybe not a negative, more than just something to be aware of so you don't go and poke your eye out. <laughs> now, another thing I'm just not massively in love with is about this car is that the seating position is quite high. Now for some people that's going to be a massive positive and you know I am you know I'm six foot one I've got a long back and I've still got headroom so in that respect it's pretty good. I just feel that it's sort of like I'm sort of sat up like this which again some people will love but personally I like to lower the seat a bit lower. That's something that's in stark contrast to say the i3 where your your feet are a little bit higher and you do feel lower. So Personally, I'm not a massive fan of it, but you might find that as a massive positive. You do get forward and back adjustments, and obviously you can adjust the, the angle of the back of the seat, but you can't go up as well. So if you wanted an even higher seat, you'd have to look into you know getting a, a pillow or something to lift you up. Um, there's good adjustment on the steering wheel, all that's you know to be expected. And overall, when I'm sat in the car, I do feel very comfortable. However, it would just be nice just to have a little bit of up and down adjustment on the seat, but that's probably the way the packaging of an electric car, there's got to be somewhere for, you know, everything underneath the seats, so. So as the name of this channel suggests, I'm a lifelong petrol head. I do love driving my cars and the Zoe isn't probably, you know, the number one car you think of when you think of a performance small car. So as to be expected, the steering, is aimed more at the comfort and ease of use angle than it would be for steering feel. I find that the, you know, it's, it steers really nicely. It does actually handle well, but there's a bit of a wooliness at, at certain parts of the steering. And because it's front wheel drive, if you do use some of the power, and it's, you know, it's not, it's like a lot of electric cars, they're not slow, although on paper the not 60 time at just under 10 seconds may come across as slow. You know, it feels very nippy around town. Um, you do get a little bit of torque steer because all that power is going to the front wheels. Um, and similarly with the brake pedal, it's got regen and I've actually been using it in the, the, the B mode, which is, I assume, brake mode, which uses regen even more. And the regen is great. However, the brake pedal does sort of lose a little bit of feel. And this is one of the, the ways that something like a BMW i3 really does sort of um, trump the Zoe. However, for a lot of people, it probably isn't something they worry about. And if you are looking for a car to drive around town and do school runs and go to the shops and stuff like that, then this ultralight steering is gonna really appeal. So, as you can probably tell by this video, although it's five things I hate, they're really nitpicking, aren't they? This is a great car. So the Renault Zoe comes in at about 30,000 pounds. So it's not a cheap car. Um, although for what you get as a package, it's, it's a really good value car. And obviously if you're comparing this to the petrol equivalent, you've got to think of the lower running costs of running this. However, it's a little bit typical Renault in that when you close the door, it just sounds like, just sounds a bit cheap. And I, you know, it's a very minor thing, but it sounds a little bit more like the vans you, you hire from, you know, Ikea to get your, you know, your new bed home. Um, it's not a major thing, but I would imagine you could probably have a play with the seals and maybe put a bit of a soft close, I don't know. There's, people do it for the, the Model 3, for example. 
and it just seals it a bit better, makes it a bit nicer. But you know, it makes for a light door, and it's you know they're very easy to close. Um, the back door, similarly, you know you've got um, this sort of hidden. Do that. You've got the sort of hidden door handle on the back door, which looks really clean. Can be a little bit fiddly for children, but you know I actually think it's pretty good. And there's not much force there if you to get fingers stuck. But again, you know the back door and everything just just feels a little bit cheaper. But then that's quite common in the electric car world because the batteries and motors and everything are so expensive. You've got to be putting the money where it counts and that's going to be on the tech, the batteries and the motor. So the fact it's got slightly cheaper sound indoors, it's not the biggest issue really, is it? But still, I think it could be improved. The next point is to do with the the noises this car makes because obviously electric cars are virtually silent in a lot of ways but from a safety point of view a lot of cars including the zoe have a pedestrian noise i think this is a good thing and the i3 and the testers i've owned don't have that so when you're driving in car parks often people don't hear you so it's a very positive thing having this pedestrian noise the problem is I'm not a massive fan of how it sounds and um, it's kind of annoying because it goes up to 20 miles an hour and then just cuts out and at first I was like this is a really noisy motor but then I realized and they do give you a button to turn it off which is great however this is a safety feature and I think it's important that you have it I don't think it would be that hard for Renault to give you some options of how this sounds. And if I've missed something in the menus, I'm so sorry. And um, that, you know, that would solve it. For example, what Tesla are going to do in the Model 3 is they're going to allow you to have a choice of sounds. So some will be funny, some will be very standard, some will just sound like a, a normal car. And I think that might be better. So that noise is a little bit annoying. You can turn it off, yes, but I would rather have some options. The other option, the other um, comment about noise is that the, the charging on my home charger was really noisy to the point that I could hear the, the whir of the charger inside the house. Um, I put a post on Twitter with a video asking if people had the same experience and I'll pop this in now. So I'm charging on my Tesla wall charger. Uh, the Zoe. Can you hear this noise? It just started the fans as well. This is like a um, like a Tesla supercharger noise. I can hear the noise inside the house. This high pitched noise. It's quite annoying because the i3 is absolutely silent. But um, yeah, this isn't. And it came back that quite a lot of people did. So this is obviously not just my charger or anything. This is a, an issue with you know the Zoe. Okay, so it needs the fans to call it and everything else, but I wonder if a little bit more engineering in that charging could cut out that sound. Because the i3, for example, that charges silently. And I just think that's nice because noisy charging can make people a little bit nervous. You know, Tesla superchargers can make the car sound really loud. And you get people in the owners club going, oh, what's going on? And that's normal. And so is this. But I just think a little bit better engineering with the charging and how it goes in would just cut out that sound. But yeah, just while you know. So there you have it. As you can see, the negatives of the Renault Zoe ZE50 are really nitpicking. And for some people, they might even be a positive. So I've really enjoyed this car. Thank you to the EVC in Milton Keynes where I rented the car for the week. If you're interested, please go to the description and see the link to rent one yourself. Or just head down to your local Renault garage where I'm sure they've got a demonstrator and test driver. Really good to enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and have a look around the channel for the other videos on the Renault Zoe, including the five things I love. See you soon. Bye.